Hello and welcome to the Student Starcraft AI Tournament broadcast. This is Nightcat. I will be your host for today. We've got a lineup of recommended games from the Replays channel that we will be working through here. Uh, starting off with Brian Weber spawning as the Yellow Zerg up at the top left of Empire of the Sun and cross spawn bottom right in the White Zerg we have Zer Zer Zer. And it looks like we don't have any four pulls or anything. This one, I believe the text with it was the glunk about a uh, issue with some scourge later on in the game or something along those lines. So we might see a bit of hilarity happen. <clears throat> Pardon me here. Looks like we are getting a 12 hatch from Brian Weber. Bowser Sir went for the nine pool. With gas, it probably is going to be nine pool. Speedlings did get ahead and get a rather exposed and forward uh, sunken here. There's a lot of surface area easily for uh, Zerglings to attach to, and uh, kind of clean that up if there were some sort of early Zerg aggression. But no aggression coming out of Brian Weber here. Gas finishing up, going ahead and getting those workers on the gas. Zerglings are out now for Zer Zer Zer. Scouting with that Zergling. Overlord for. Brad Weber coming across the map here. Overlord for Zerzer Zer over on the left. So the Zergling is going to check this top right. Find nothing and then go ahead and check the top left. Meanwhile, Lair is being started. Uh, let's see here. Actually, Speedling's not the case. Uh, movement speed being started by Brian Weber first. We've got a little bit of a chase happening here. It looks like Zerzer Zer going to be denied finding that top left spot. But by process of elimination, it should be able to piece together that that top left is where Brian Weber is. Zergling speed, once that's done, gonna be able to uh, outrace the Zerglings of Zerzer, Zer Zer, but Zerzer Zer Zer is getting that faster Spire, so that's where we might see a bit of a difference here in this. The Spire, though, started for Brian Weber, and it is cross -bond. I think it'll be done in enough time for Mutas to be out to defend. Speed done, and so we can see that the, <laughs> we can see the speed difference even at 2x here. Uh, the occasional hit happening there to that poor little Zergling of Zer Zer Zer. And there it does get picked off. So a new one being sent out. Interesting how uh, now it's kind of trapped in between two of them, but it's not really getting any hits. Anyway, the Mutalisks just finishing up the first ones for Zer 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 now. Gonna go ahead and take out Red Weathers. Zerglings, but now we've got Mutalisks started for Brian Weber. As the Mutalisks, actually the one Zergling there on the way. Now the Mutalisks on the way for Zer Zer Zer, but now they're pulling back into a defensive position. And there we have in the center arena. Bit of uh, Mutalisk on Mutalisk action here happening. Looks like Brian Weber's being a little bit too unfocused here left for Brian Weber at the moment. Or on the way. Second hatchery coming down for Zer Zer Zer. The Overlord being punished. Uh, looks like Zer 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 Oh, there's the Mutalisk. Okay. Now chasing that Mutalisk away. Saving that Overlord's life. The second hatchery is in the main. We are actually expanding to a third and a fourth. Double expanding here. Maybe hoping uh, that one of the expansions will be missed, even if the other is found. Evolution Chamber on the way. Got a couple more Sunkets morphing. Maybe gonna throw down a Spore. There, uh, Spore Colony on the way. The Needle's count is just pretty large here for Zer Zer Zer. Eight Needle is attached. Base here still undisturbed. More spores on the way. Yeah, more spores are on the way. Queen's Nest on the way as well. A lot of spores at the natural, but uh, the other bases are kind of being left. Not being found. I keep like seeing yellow dots go to this third base here and thinking that they're white dots. This is why I keep kind of peeking over there. This fourth base, though, also undiscovered. Oh, okay, now we do have a Zergling finding this third base. So the sneaky third base getting found out about here. What's this here? 
It's like a hatchery going down. So the third base was found, but it's not really being attacked. It's that drone almost leaning uh, to the fourth base there. Okay, now Zerzo is going to go ahead and attack this third base. I just don't think there's enough defenses here to actually uh, try to keep this alive. I heard a couple of scourge there. Yeah, the occasional trickling in of uh, Zerkling going into that match was not really going to do a lot. Zerzo -Zer did take its natural now. Nice uh, sunken colonies there, but. It would be weird if there were more like spores in the main covering everything, like the mutalisks from Brian Weber could just kind of ignore the mutalisks. Yeah, now this hidden fourth gets found and clear cleaned up as well. It looks like oh Brian Weber has actually blocked these drones in, they can't get out because of this uh, placement, they can't figure out. Now if there's like a drone stop here, in between the uh, spore and the hatchery, and that, yeah, so... Zerglings, though, are able to apparently get out, but these drones can't figure out how to do it. Continued uh, Mutalisk Scourge fighting here. Is Erling starting to make their way across the map, though? Brian Weber's just starting to sort of flood Zerglings, and, uh, oh, wait, some of the drones actually got out, it looks like, figured a way out. Trying to, either that or they were, uh, the natural one, line ones, but trying to get a third started here once the money is, oh, the money is available, it's just not yet. More Zerglings, more Mutalisks on the way, looks like that. Outpouring its Zerglings did get cleaned up. Now there's enough Zerg, uh, Mutalisks here that they're just sort of challenging this natural, taking out a couple of the spore colonies, but a bit bruised backing off a bit here now. Zergling, another Zergling uh, wave pushing forward from Brian Weber. And you know what? I think this is louder than it should be. I think once again, so apologies if it was hard to hear me over the game sounds, I think once again my attempts to adjust the volume of my browser did not work the way it's supposed to. At the audio levels, and it's still looking really loud. Hmm. After this, I will take a look and adjust audio levels here. But uh, the Scourger landed some hits. We're down to five Mutalisks now. And there's, there's, there's like four Mutalisks now. A lot of spore colonies. So, I mean, Brian Weber, like. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, no, hey. Follow. Oh, nice catch. <laughs> Second full retreat, find that overlord, kill it. But there's so so many minerals for Brian Weber. It's kinda crazy, like that they have that many minerals right now. Zerzer so, 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 taking a fourth base here, but all these Zerglings, they're starting to fight back here. The Mutalisk count for Zerzer so, 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 had dropped for a bit, but it's back up to ten now. But there's just so many Zerglings coming in here. After the upgrades, they do have two carapace. And they are crackling, so they do attack very, very fast. But I don't think, uh, yeah, melee attack has not been upgraded. Actually, uh, Mealisk attack has been upgraded twice. And air carapace once. Whereas Zerzo Zer has not upgraded the attack for their Mealisks at all. And I don't think they've teched to Hive either. Yeah, they're just, uh, on... Mutaling on... Nice diving off those Mealisks there. Or, sorry, of the Scourge on the Mealisks there. But good pick off there by the uh, Mutas, so. Misclicked a little bit there. I'm going to use right click to follow a little bit here. 
because the like how dynamically this uh, mutalisk ball is moving, I kind of wish I could uh, just right click a muta and just follow it. So let's see here. Yep. <laughs> Scourge were saying hi to that overlord, but not actually attacking it. That's okay. Maybe that's the Scourge bug that was being talked about. <laughs> They're like, hi. Hi there. How are you? What's going on? What's your name? Movie your friend? Uh, that is pretty funny. Although it's, it's kind of good because it's like, okay, we found this Overlord. We don't necessarily want to waste our Scourge on that because, you know, we want to take out the thing that can actually attack us. The Mutalisks. But the fact that they, like, get sucked onto this uh, Overlord and almost act as like a... Uh, a scourge magnet. Now there was an attempt at taking a fifth base here by Zerzer that got uh, cleaned up by the Zerglings of Ren Weber. It's crazy the amount of Zerglings that Ren Weber's just able to keep pumping out and keep sending. The main, meanwhile, could like just be cleaned up. There's no uh, spores there, so. Sorry about the long silence there. My voice is a little bit shaky. Tell, so there's something in my throat. I'm trying to clear it out and spare you hearing that. But looks like there's enough mutalisks now, 20, able to just clean up the spore colonies. And I think this is going to start the end, or be the start of the end for Brian Weber in this game. Hmm, <clears throat> sorry. I do not know what's happening with me today. All those Zerglings. So much Zergling blood there, dang. And this base did get established again, which is kind of funny. Yeah, Zerzers are finally able to hit those critical mass numbers of, this, of the Mutalisks. To be able to bust through the Spore Colonies with the Mutalisks themselves. And now it's just clean up to the wind, so... Pretty good game put on there by Brian Weber. Which is not quite able to <clears throat> ever really clean up the mutalisks of Zer Zer Zer. Seems like there's maybe a little bit of issue with uh, focus of the mutalisks of Brian Weber. Where like the control was just ended up a little bit better for uh, Zer 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 in this case, but definitely a fun, entertaining game. To watch we'll speed up the cleanup phase here just a little bit. And I'm gonna take a moment to figure out the audio thing and uh, we'll get into the second game here. Three, two, one. Cut. All right, audio levels figured out. <clears throat> so the last game was really loud. Apologies. Um, and yes, again, where I adjusted the volume for my browser didn't actually adjust the volume for my browser. So that is fixed now. The rest of this cast hopefully should be much better. Audio balance wise, sorry. <clears throat> audio things are always tricky to make sure that we get right. Whenever doing a recording or stream or anything like that. Always an adventure. So this game here, we have Crazio spawning as the Orange Terran over on the bottom right of Fighting Spirit. And TSC Moo spawning as the Teal Terran over on the bottom left, the Rescuable Terran. So <clears throat> we have 
a little bit of Terran vs. Terran going on here. <clears throat> Excuse me, pardon me. Looks like we are getting essentially mirror builds here. Crazio though, scouting the middle. Just checking for any sort of proxy that could be there. TSC me just heading straight to its first scout position. Finds the location of Crazio and just backs the uh, worker out immediately. <clears throat> Crazio going to get the last scout. A little bit unfortunate, but shouldn't be that big of a deal this game since TSC Mu is not really doing anything uh, too crazy. Scout, second scout being chased off by Crazio's Marine there. So we have two factories coming out. Looks like both players going for one base play here. Not trying to get a quick expansion out. <clears throat> okay, there's a machine shop. So both players going shop first. The crazy is getting two shops and uh TSME was opting to start a vulture in that second one. Now what do we have? We have mines for TC Moo, siege mode for Crazio. <clears throat> we have a couple of vultures out on the map for both players at this time. Vulture being chased back. And sort of like the Beetalisks here, this might just be a little bit easier to try and follow at the 2x speed using that right click drag a little bit. Eric's for Crazio going over to TSC Moo to scout what's going on. Going to be able to count the or check out the factory count and all that fun stuff but gonna pull back here now that there are some glides to repel that building. TSU's army moving across the bridge here. There are no tanks yet for TSU, I don't think. Yeah, it's just dying vultures for Goliaths. Um, now we've get, we get the siege on siege like crazy does, so I might try to look away from that just a little bit so we don't get uh, blasted with that sound effect. It looks like the transfer a little bit early for TSC Mu, causing some long distance mining. But if this is fully saturated, it's probably better than having those workers on the main mineral line, so. Yeah, that natural is finished now. I'm gonna be able to go ahead and move a little more easily. I think there's another command center being started somewhere. I think, or, oh no, that's for Crazy, I'm sorry. I thought maybe TSME was going was had one going in the main and was gonna fly it somewhere, but that does not seem to be the case. Large open area here in TSC Moo mains uh TSC Moo's main. I wonder what that's for, but we could get siege by yet. Yeah. Okay. We're getting it now. <clears throat> so Ink should be pretty soon here for TSC Moo. Crazy I'm moving forward a bit here. During their third, and this is actually kind of like one of the problems of Fighting Spirit. <clears throat> one of the imbalances we can see from this positioning here. There's a lot of positional advantages you can get based on the spawns. So like, this third is supposed to be like your, you know, your third, the one that you take as a third. It's really not a good third in these positions for Crazy to take because it's so close to... TSC Moo's bridge here. It, it's so hard for Crazio to defend that. Whereas this third, the third for TSC Moo is super easy to defend because it's so far away from Crazio. And this third is not the easiest to take because oh, we actually had a vulture run by here. 
Crazy are pulling most of the army back to try and deal with this, but the worker count is uh, plummeting pretty hard here for Grazia. Vulture splitting up here. <laughs> Since Vulture was just doing donuts around the tank, I don't know why. But nice uh, dive in there. Still 40 some workers for Crazio, but that was nice to uh, very cute to see that run by happen. It looks like we might start to see another one happen soon. But Crazio, I think, just has the tank numbers from having been producing tanks for so much longer than TSC knew. Defense matrix going down there. Like if Crazio wanted to, I think it has the tank numbers, it could break this position. There's enough here, I think, to just, like, A move. Valkyrie coming out. Gonna chase away the, uh, science vessel a little bit, but... And crazy inching forward here. Almost pure tank production out of the factories for both players right now. TC Moo is up on bases. So. Crazio's full focus on this contain has allowed TSC Moo to really take some bases that perhaps it shouldn't be able to take. But this, like, crescent moon here. It's starting to look pretty scary if uh, TSC Moo gets pushed back across this bridge. I don't think TSC Moo would be able to battle back across it. <clears throat> I mean, TSC Moo's supply is so much higher, but also, like, plenty of that additional supplies and workers. Let's take a look at the army counts here. 37 tanks for Crazia. This is where, like, switching to BCs might be useful. We do see some battlecruisers coming out for TSC move. But the battlecruisers actually need to do something and, you know, be willing to engage with the... There we go. Just taking some shots here now. Starting to slowly clean up some of these tanks. Goliath's on the way for Crazia, so if we don't get an overproduction here... What are the upgrades we've got? Plus two on the way attack. Plus two, plus three on the way for TSC Mu. And we've got plus three attack on the way for Crazio. Looks like plating is just one. Uh, we don't have any weapon upgrade or ship upgrades though. So the battle cruisers are just one, one. Would love to start to see the battle cruisers getting upgrades. Yeah, very slowly pushing them back across this bridge. factory they're getting taken out crazy has found the third here but there's no anti-air so battle cruiser is gonna push this back for now but is the goliath just five for crazy right now more on the way though With the space count and everything, I like the switch over to Battle Cruisers, but needs to continue to produce tanks behind it. Because you need the tanks to sort of push back the enemy Goliaths while your Battle Cruisers deal with enemy tanks. How many Battle Cruisers do we have on the field right now? Six of them. They're a little bit spread out, I think, but it's northwest position. Ooh, nice Yamato there, but that one's going to get taken out, unfortunately.
Crazy, meanwhile, now is starting to take their side of the map over. They still have a base left to take. Looks like TSC Moo was thinking about going up there to take bases, but finds, oh wait, that's taken. I'm going to head back off now. So Crazio hasn't really been able to effectively push this third just yet. Looks like starting to maybe be able to. I don't think they've found the other bases yet, though. But yeah, I mean, they pretty much hold this bridge right now, so... It's going to be really difficult for TSC Mood to break out of. Four Valkyrie and five vessels for TSC Mood. Two vessels for... So there's there's four air units, and we've got four Valkyrie right now. Crazy is trying to push across this bridge. I don't feel like that's really what it should be doing from a strategic position. It probably has the numbers to do it because uh, TSC move really hasn't been producing much on the ground army. If it had more tanks here, maybe it would be even harder for maybe some tanks positioned up on this high ground here. Crazio would be good to just hold this bridge and then take out expansions. Crazio taking the middle, which will give it the base advantage. Kind of funny to see here. TSC Moot could also, to, to bust out this contain, produce some more factories up here in this other main. And then it could be able to just march army out from the other side. Natural technically being lost here, but still being held. I think that was the defense matrix something SCB or something. It took a lot of tank shots there. Tank count still very much ahead for Crazio. A lot of Goliaths produced right now. Crazy now starting to hit this top left. She just is not a lot to defend or to defend that top left position. So this is a bridge that I think Crazyo can successfully get across. I guess these tanks are like just out of each other's range. I don't get why SCVs are being sent to their death here. I'm trying to see, like, where's Crazyo making gains here? So the tank count is thinning out here now at the natural. I think uh, PC Moo is actually able to keep this, although this commsat keeps getting shelled and destroyed. So that's like 50 minerals and 50 gas. That's like probably consuming almost all of TC Moo's gas here. The constant rebuilding of that unsafe commsat. Then I think this tank might be blocking it, so that might help the. No, it's not blocking it. Okay, but the, the fending tank was able to be taken out. There's more production happening up here. Like at this base, is, uh, all the workers have been taken out. I think they keep flooding down. I'm not sure where they're trying to go. TC Moo's worker count is really low right now. Like it makes sense, like, there's no workers here because this is mined out. This was destroyed. If all this is getting shelled, does it really make sense that there's no workers here? Like, they kept running down and getting taken out, so I'm not sure where they were trying to go. This base is almost mined out. There's no workers up here for some reason either for TSC Moo. I mean, TSC Moo has a bank of minerals right now. 
Uh, it looks like the natural, the army here has been broken into. And so now that means the main is going to fall with all of its tech. There's even the marine here. <laughs> and another one, I don't know if those are like from the original batch marines or where they've necessarily come from. The crazy did land a com or make a covert ops and have a, a land of barracks here, so. Ghosts could have potentially been made, but I don't think there are any currently. I know there are two somewhere out on the map. So do you see me trying to hold on to this main, but. There's some uh, cloaked wraith there that I don't. Oh yeah, there are commsats, so there is a beans to detect it, but battle cruisers just sort of doing that whole hover thing just outside of range. Mata going down on one of the wraiths, floating that factory to its doom. Battle cruisers out for Crazio as well here now. We're talking about upgrade-wise. Ship upgrades getting being uh, obtained by Crazio, not by TSC. Actually, no. Sorry, there is ship armor too, but there is and there's ship weapons too. Okay, so TSC did get ship upgrades. They might have had it earlier when I was looking, but I might have missed those icons. Um, but I did look a little while ago, so plenty of time for those upgrades to have been obtained since then. Looks like Crazio is going to slowly break through this natural as well. See if the tech and supply depots get replaced by TSU at all in that other main, but. Regardless, this is going to be cleaned up here. Crazy is switching to basically full air production at this point, but it's got a good, uh, okay health, uh, tank count nine. Could maybe be replacing this a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, this game is pretty much just one anyway, so that's more vultures on the way. A few more barracks actually going now. We still. Oh no, the ghosts still get killed at some point. Okay. And here we have the top left falling now. I think we can go ahead and speed up the cleanup phase here. So, fun little uh, Ted v Ted here that we saw. A nice little push across this space as. Uh, Crazy just inched TSC move back into their natural and then was able to break through that natural. Crazy <laughs> take the last bit of minerals there. Yeah, and then TSC move will go ahead and get the GG once it runs out of workers and money, I believe. So, very fun game. We'll go ahead and get our next one going here. In three, four. Today, we will be watching Willie T spawning as the Orange Terran down in the bottom right. And a uh, bot that I don't believe I've casted yet, Pylon Puller, spawning as the Blue Protoss down in the bottom left. We're on Circuit Breakers here. Excited to see what uh, Pylon Puller is going to be doing here. Gateway opener. She on nine supply. Looks like it stopped producing workers, which is uh, interesting to see. I'm getting two gateways here. And workers being started now. So double gateway on nine. I think we will be seeing some heavy zealot harassment here, but I don't think we've had a scout go out. Uh, the pylon started uh, to clear up that supply block. Really 
17. I don't think that SCV actually got to see any buildings, but by process of elimination, that's the last start location. Zealots so going out now. Looks like they are headed to the right start location. There's a fair bit of them, so we'll see how Willie T handles this zealot pressure here. So it's backing off. Marines loading up into the bunker when those uh, zealots get seen, and then getting out when the zealot aggression is over. And now we've got another dive in here onto the bunker. But I need to get that repair going fast. The bunker actually falls. It's a few worker kills being scored, but could could dive in on that tank. Could take that tank out. There we go. Well, one was doing some damage to it. Actually, the tank kind of splashing the SCBs, helping the uh, zealots. I'm lazy down to 14 workers right now. Nice bit of two gate aggression. Well, now it's four gates, I think. Uh, four gate, yeah, zealot production here. Here we're gonna have yeah, another <laughs> zealot dive in here. I like the prioritization of workers with this. Very, very cool to see. It's really teased down to eight workers now. <laughs> the tanks are actually like splashing the workers too, so they're helping accelerate the death of the SCVs. We just got the stream across the minimap of these zealots. I think Island Puller is going to win this out in the end. Because, yeah, Willie T's just going to run out of... There's the last... All right, there's one worker... Oh, okay, now there's no workers left. No money left for Willie T. Very nicely done. Very nicely executed. Just constantly streaming in those zealots. They have the, the tanks just splashing into the, the worker line. It was not helping Willie T there. Very cool to see. Oh, but there's the floating edge Derek Bay, but Willie T goes ahead and gives the win to Pylon Puller instead of being annoying and just floating that edge Derek Bay there. So, fun little game there. We'll go ahead and get our next game loaded up. This one we have McRaves, uh, sorry, not McRaves, see, just McRave playing as Terran, spawning up at the top right in the salmon color. And in the orange color, we have as Terran, Kangarubot. And this one is on benzene, which uh, was in like the ladder pool not long ago, if I'm remembering right. It still kind of weirds me out how in the OpenBW replay viewer, uh, the space is just blank. It's not filled with like the little star background. So we've got a depot, we've got a barracks, we've got a depot, African robot, and now a barracks. Dancing Scout of the Grave. Natural bunker going down for Kangaroo Bot to secure that natural. Factory being started for McRave. I don't think yet. Yeah, Kangaroo Bot does not have a factory yet. 
Could have had it one started, but is uh, devoting some resources to bunkers. Which tanks outrange uh, bunkers unless you get, uh, even without siege, unless you get uh, marine range. I believe marine range will even that up. Factory now being started for Kangaroo Bot. Pretty throwing down another barracks and a starport. Also getting the machine shop. So we will be seeing tanks. Another a second factory being started by Kangaroo Bot. And then Academy to go ahead and get that Comsat scanner. And we also being started by Grave, and we've got a control tower going here. Got a nice arc here forming around the buildings. A little converge there on Kangaroo Bot's units and force them back, and back into this nice big concave. We have a drop ship now. Natural not being taken yet though by Kangaroo Bot, so it secured it. But hasn't actually taken it. Both players just on one base still. Grave moving forward. There's a nuclear silo, so not even getting a comsat. Nice targeting of the marines with the vultures, but the, the units just kind of conga lining in here. There's about to be a lot of marines though firing on these bunkers. There's no repair going down. SCVs being all the way from the main. And the SCV's being targeted down. Forward bunker holding, though. Now Kangaroo Bot unloading and pushing forward after that, trying to do the counter here. Either side has Marines, or has Medics, but is sending in Marines. We've got the dropship here. Maybe it's loaded. Maybe gonna drop in the main. We'll see what they're gonna do here. Nope. Oh. Nope. Oh. Oh, drop the ghost. Oh, we've got a nuke. The mine's being laid, but... Oh, not in time, the nuke lands. That was a good uh, use of the mines to try and clear that cloaked ghost, but the mine, the first mine laid was just a little bit too far away to actually turn on. With that kangaroo bot out of minerals. Nobody mining the minerals, trying to repair the uh, command center. Very <laughs> funny game here. I like the very bold entrance of the dropship with the ghost. The ghost baited out a scan before there was anything there that could kill it, and then the mine was just planted a little bit too far away. This feels like a StarCraft 1 game, not a Brood War game, because, like... Or, like, you know, without the expansion, because there's no medics. Marines are being thrown at each other, there's no medics, there's no brood war units involved. It's a good old-fashioned marine nuke. Yeah, with that now, I think it's just gonna be cleanup of Kangaroo Bot, so we'll go ahead and speed this up just a bit here. Another nuke. The dropship following the ghost around, like, get back here, you! We see one more. The nuke is done, but there's no command center to nuke, so I don't think we're quite gonna see it. Oh, I think uh, mine got triggered there, but in the end, McRave gets the nukes off, and I think we need to go back and. Uh, See if we can. Oh. 
watch in beautiful slow-mo here. At a fourth speed. Ghost dies. New glands. Down to one worker. And it was, I think, the gas miner that was in the refinery at the time the nuke landed. And then the last bit of mineral spent repairing this command center, so... Nicely done there, nicely done there. Go ahead and get into... Our last game of the day here. It's not quite getting to everything that is in the replays channel today. But here we've got another McRaven Kangaroo Bot game. This time, uh, McRave as Protoss on Heartbreak Bridge on the left side as the brown Protoss. And then we've got Blue Zerg Kangaroo Bot here over on the right. Immediate Drone Scout from Kangaroo Bot. Looks like McGrave gonna go for a fast expand here. Okay, drone going into the main here. Oh, it looked like maybe it was gonna. Oh, it didn't have the minerals though, but like it looked like it was maybe gonna try and plant a building there or something. It would be kind of funny to see, like some sort of proxy hatch in a corner or something like that. Not gonna get anything? Okay, there's a hatchery. Pretty late hatchery at the natural. This cannon could be 100% skipped because there was no uh, spawning pool for the longest time. Let's see what we've got going on here. We've got a pylon in the main. We've got our gateway here at the natural choke. to rebastard. I like I'm to right click this, pro this drone and just follow it for a moment. But we've got a couple of uh, sunkins coming down here so that's good to see. First few zealots coming out. So everything's looking pretty standard so far. Um, we've got the core just finishing up. We'll see if a stargate gets thrown down when we see corsairs. And yep, that's what we're going to see here. So we've got one gate, corsair coming out. Try and scout getting picked off there. Zerglings coming out though. And the prep scout wanders a little too close to the sunken colonies. There is no anti air though for Kangaroo Bot, and this could be a problem as we should start to see Corsair production pretty soon here. We have a fleet beacon coming down though. And another Stargate. Nothing being in a third star. Is this going to be two base carrier? Oh no, we've got scouts. I was wondering if it could be scouts too because there are uh, scout upgrades at the fleet beacon. But there's still like zero in terms of anti air here for Kangaroo Bot, so like. Okay, there is an evolution chamber that's being made. Measureless Den as well, so there will be anti-air relatively soon. We've got the first zealots marching uh, across the map here. I wish instead of right-click that was like on like middle mouse click or something, the, the drive ability, so that way you don't sometimes get that right-click menu. Scout trying to pick away at these zerglings here, but scouts really do pretty abysmal damage. Uh, ground damage here. But if you get enough scouts massed up, man, they can tear apart ground units because they are a bit hardy themselves. 
And so if like the anti-air can't take them out fast enough, like they just deal, they can deal so much damage in large enough packs. Nice avoiding the, the skirting around the range of that spore colony. And see, like, that's what I mean. Like there's just a few hydralisks there, but like, the scouts are able to just take the hydralisks out relatively quickly. Like, yeah, they take a little bit of damage, but now, like, the numbers are starting to grow for the scouts to where they're just destroying these hydralisks. Even being willing to take some shots from the spore colony here to get the drones. Which is just silly to see. I think if Kangaroo Bot could get enough Hydralisk's mask, it'd probably be better able to deal with this. <laughs> the Evolution Chamber just being left float all the way out here just looks so odd to see. Yeah, I mean at this point, they're, the the pack of uh, Scouts is just like one shotting the Hydralisks basically. Overlord. Now here comes Alex to help with cleanup. Very, very nicely done there with the scouts. Yeah, like I was saying. Scouts in large enough numbers, man, they can deal some serious damage, but a lot of their drawbacks are like their cost, their build time, things like that. Um, so getting up to that critical mass where they're able to like one-shot Hydralisks, not that easy. Plus as a human player, you have to have like a trapped probe somewhere to be able to do that sort of stacking. Because um, there really isn't like a good unit otherwise to do that stacking with, but the AIs don't do their stacking via the same tricks that humans do so they don't require that sort of unit um like the zergs don't need to use an overlord to stack their mutalisks uh for the ais and um so you know terrans don't have to do the same thing don't have to have a trapped scv with their wraiths excuse me sorry about that just got the sudden urge to have to stretch there and then the uh the the uh, Protoss don't have to have a trap probe with their scouts, but very fun set of games that we had here today, uh, all showing off different aspects of the AI scene as it is today. Very fun to see this sort of thing. Hopefully, I don't know, these uh, replays from McRave were from their own personal dev time, so hopefully these are some things that we start to see uh, if these updates hit any of the ladders, maybe we get some more games that kind of look like this uh, with the nuke. Although I don't think there is a Terran version of McGrave active on any ladders. Uh, I know McGrave's been focusing and working a lot on uh, their Zerg play. So hopefully we see some updates on the Protoss side as well, because this was, this was pretty fun to see. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing this against some other bots and seeing how they perform. Or even... Um, it would be interesting to see this against uh, Zerg Hell, since Zerg Hell produces larger amounts of Hydralisks, but I think if that Hydralisk count drops pretty significantly, there could be some issues for that bot, so it might turn out kind of similar to this, but it would be fun to see. Uh, but we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. Don't forget to give a like if you enjoyed the content, and uh, if you're not subscribed, you should go ahead and do that. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We really appreciate the support, and until next time, take care, everybody.